on 770 CHQR. And as always, if you want to check things out visually, hi there, Facebook Live. Yes, we are on Facebook Live. You can check out the video after the fact as well. We'll post it up on Twitter as well, on YouTube. All that fun stuff, all courtesy of our good friend and digital coordinator, Adam Toy and Mike Roberts joining us from Co-op Wine, Spirits and Beer as always for Wine Wednesday. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon. How are things in the Roberts residence? Ah, it's good. Things are good, you know, getting into busy season here and it's starting to feel like winter and stuff like that. So yeah, it's all good. Do you have like mini panic attacks when it gets to this point? Like, okay, do I have everything going? Like your mind has to go a million miles an hour because like you said, you're into busy time now. Yeah, I mean, there's lots going on. So it's uh, keeping, a, keeping a list and crossing things <laughs> off all the time. But uh, it's the fun time of year for sure. Like, like I love Thanksgiving and Easter and Christmas and all that for, you know, all of the reasons you think of. But, you know, in store, it's, you know, people are coming in and they want your advice and that's what we're here for. And so it's fun. So it's good that way. You're getting everything all set up Christmas wise as well, getting all the displays up proper and putting some mistletoe on things. I was harassing the store manager at Shaughnessy today about uh, how come we don't have holiday music on yet? Because I started singing it randomly. So. <laughs> That yeah. started back in August, I'm, I'm assuming. No, you have to always have to wait till Remembrance okay. Day, don't you? Isn't that right. the rule? You have to wait. I think that there's there's some differing opinions on yeah, it, for I think sure. So. Uh, let's talk about Grape Escape. It is coming up. You guys are, are just about down to the nitty gritty here. And Saturday's sold out already. Yeah, Saturday always sells out uh, before the Friday does. I think it's... Uh, you know, you have time in the day to relax and slowly get ready, and people get pretty dulled up for Grape Escape, which is pretty awesome. And uh, Fridays, usually the ticket sales are a little bit slower. But, I mean, we're getting close. We're three-quarters of the way there for Friday as well. But Saturday is sold out, and there will not be tickets at the door. So, What are you looking forward to most with it? It's fun. It's uh, <laughs> I love people watching, so it's always a good time in that sense. Like there's two and a half thousand people there, right? So uh, it's lots of fun, and it continues to grow. And we see more and more really cool, unique products. And then now it's even more exciting because there's so much local stuff happening with breweries and distilleries. And mm-hmm. distilleries are making what we call RTDs, like ready to drink. So that's like mixed drinks, mixed cocktails in, in a can and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that's always fun. And then we're doing, the Somalia team always hosts little sort of mini events at Grapescape and we're doing guests the expensive wine. Oh, so okay. our participants can sit in and we'll be tasting, you know, five or six wines. And one of them is going to be, you know, a 50 or $100 bottle of wine. They have to kind of figure out which one is the expensive one so anything trends wise that you're already starting to notice as we get closer and closer to christmas oh christmas it's kind of the you know things get a little crazy people want more and more like accessories and stuff like that and our stores in the past we haven't done too much with that but you're seeing more and more people interested in like glassware and decanters and Mm -hmm kind of the the tricks of the trade, if you will, or the tools, I should say, Uh, and then getting into like bitters and stuff like that. And then people are always looking for the advent calendars and stuff, which is always (laughs) always lots of fun. So Absolutely. Uh, Let's get into the wine that you've brought in today and give us a little bit of the details here. Yeah, this is from Pira Mima. So it can only be from Australia with a name like that, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, it's pretty unique. It's 100% Petit Verdot, so a great variety. You Small. See, uh, yes. <laughs> that, that much I've got. My, my <laughs> elementary school French is still co- coming into play. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> and uh, a great variety you don't see very often, you know, sort of just on its own or mono cepage, as if you want to uh, sound fancy. But um, they like to do that in Australia. And in Australia, of course, they speak funny. An Australian would call this a Petit Verdot. <laughs> So, um, but that's okay. But uh, really neat, a rustic and rugged kind of grape variety. Like if you like Cabernet Sauvignon, you would probably like this wine style. It is pretty grippy and pretty tannic. It's definitely super dark and dense in your glass. And then it's Australia. So it's, you know, hot climate. So the grapes get really ripe and really rich and really flavorful. And yeah, it's fun. I was just going to say, when you said dark, like that might be the darkest wine you've brought in. Like just from a glance, it almost looks black from over top. For sure. It's got to be one of them for sure. So uh, Petit Verdict is a really small, (laughs) great varieties and thick skin. So you get lots of color out of there and that rusticity. So... Tell us a little bit about the Australian wine scene because it mm-hmm. doesn't happen very often where you bring in something from from that neck of the woods. It's funny because Australia grapevines are native to there, so they brought them from France and all these places. And you know, sort of in the in the eighties, there the Australian government was like, "We want to be like the number one wine exporting country in the world." 
So the wine industry and the government sort of combined forces and came up with this giant plan to become like a, a global wine force. And then we saw, you know, the yellow tails of the world and happy dancing kangaroo and all that kind right. of business. And they were, they were one of the largest producers and exporters of wine in the world. And then that sort of wine style and wine type and branding and stuff has sort of gone by the wayside, right? Mm. Consumers more and more becoming savvy and, you know, want high quality products and want to know where they come from. So we're seeing Australia kind of go back to its roots uh, because they do have a long tradition of making wine and some really high quality wine producers and some real regionality, some really specific in Aus- areas in Australia that are known for making specific types of wine. So we're seeing... A, re, a, a revitalization of the regionality and the quality of Australia and then moving away from that kind of branded wine style. Right. And Piramima is one of the first families of Australia. So these guys have been around, I think it's 1862, 1892, it says on the label, and still family owned and operated and, and have always focused on sort of handmade wines. What would you say is there, do they, does Australia have a trademark right now? Like, is there something that really sticks out to you in terms of whether it be taste or? Yeah, it has to be Shiraz or Syrah. I mean, they're a hot climate and, and they've sort of owned Syrah grape and even changed the name and called it Shiraz. And right. that's what people recognize. But, you know, um, Cabernet, Merlot, Shiraz, uh, you know, things like uh, Petit Verdot and Grenache. There's a whole bunch of different grape varieties. But if you have to give one, it's got to be Shiraz. For but sure. is that at the end of anything and it makes it that much cooler, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk a little bit about this particular winery again. You mentioned the fact that they've been around for quite a while. So they, yeah. they're established. Mm-hmm, for sure. Like I say, they're one of the first uh, uh, families of, of wine in Australia. So a bunch of the sort of uh, long-standing family-owned wineries have got together and created like a consortium and said, Mm -hmm. hey, let's stick together and go around the world and promote Australia and like our heritage and that we, you know, we are these quality producers and we have regionality and and we have some history. And uh, so they're one of those wineries and they go around uh, doing that. And it's fun. You can find some of the back vintages of not just the uh, Petit Verdot, but some of their Shiraz and uh, some of the other wines that they make in our store. So it's lots of fun that way. Very cool. To walk us through the price point and the details again, and I'll give it a little sip. You're just shy of 30 bucks here. I mean, it is it is handmade. It goes into new oak barrels and can definitely lie down in your cellar and age and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, I, I, you know, 28 bucks kind of thing. Occasionally we put this on sale, but that's not one that usually is, you know, sort of in our ad every week right. or whatever, right? So, uh, yeah, really unique, big, robust, will be great this winter, great with chocolate and steaks, not together necessarily, right? <laughs> or but like, maybe. Bold, maybe. That, that actually like. sounds like a yeah. stampede uh, f- uh, food right there. Bold flavors <laughs> is what I should say. So that's I was going to say, that is a bold, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, thanks so much for this, Mike, and that's been another edition of uh, Wine Wednesday. Thanks for coming in. Awesome. This is Calgary Today on 770 CHQR.